said, he said, if you choose not to vaccinate your child, he said, you know, they're the ones that are technically going to get sick. You know, it's, it's not the other kids that are vaccinated. So he finds it almost ludicrous that parents are worried about unvaccinated children. If you believe in that whole theory and the vaccines, then your children should be fine. And yet there still is this, this uproar and this need for everyone to get these chemicals injected in their children's bodies. Yeah, so I mean, I, I see that as basically a public relations campaign to try and convince people that, uh, you know, the kids who are not vaccinated are a danger to their vaccinated kids. And you're right, it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But there's not very much about vaccines that makes a lot of sense because if you actually go back and look for the evidence that vaccines have present, prevented disease, you're not gonna find any. What about smallpox? Well, smallpox is uh, an interesting uh, example because uh, it actually was devised based on a different principle than our modern vaccines. So modern vaccines say that you um, induce immunity uh, to an illness by uh, giving a, uh, an antigen, which is something that would stimulate our immune system, but not giving the actual infectious agent. The smallpox vaccine was, uh, was a different theory there, what they did was that they had cows that had cowpox, and that's why the name vaccine, it comes from the Latin root for cow, um, and that disease is called vaccinia. And so that's where the word vaccine comes from. And so what they did is they had this theory that if you get a milder form of a disease, it prevents you from getting a more severe form of it. They had no concept about immunity at that time, so it was uh, based on a different theory. And what they did is they took pus out of cowpox lesions on a cow and then made a small incision in the skin of a human and put the pus basically right in the cut. So exactly what we're always told not to do uh, if we get a cut is don't put uh, dirty things in it like the pus from an animal. But this is what they, this is what Edward Jenner did um, for this, you know, so-called smallpox vaccine. And interestingly, when he was developing that, he actually tested this on his son, and his son ended up uh, crippled as a result of that. And so, in the history books, the mainstream history books, the smallpox uh, vaccine has been touted as a major success. But that's not really accurate. If you go back and look at data from the, the Royal Academy of Sciences, what you'll see is that the mortality increased substantially from smallpox uh, while these uh, vaccines were widely used. And then when they stopped being used, the numbers went back down again. So it's really uh, difficult to trust what is in like a, a general textbook or a mainstream history book without going and looking at the actual data yourself because uh, all the, the textbooks that were in medical school say that vaccines are responsible for preventing uh, many of these uh, major illnesses that were, you know, people considerably suffered from and worried about uh, in the first part of the 20th century. But if you look at um, some of the same diseases that did not have a vaccine, like scarlet fever, for example, you'll find that scarlet fever also went away with all the other diseases, even though there was no vaccine for it. And when you look at the number of cases of various illnesses like polio or measles uh, or diphtheria, you'll see that the, the prevalence or incidence of those diseases and mortality from those diseases, which in some was substantial, uh, went down almost to the current levels before a vaccine was even available for use. So you couldn't possibly attribute a vaccine uh, for causing that reduction in the illness if it wasn't even around at the time that the illness was reduced. Okay. Well, now the